generally we get the image that in Vatsan's time people were pretty much open-minded and writing a treatise on calm was accepted as any other text. However, first three chapters of the first section implicitly say a lot about apprehensions of contemporary scholars and Vatsan's justification of writing a text about calm. He starts his text by praising three aims of life, dharma, earth and calm. Vatsan says that scholars of his time often raise the question on the need of a treatise on eroticism because it is a natural and universal phenomena. And Vatsan simply replies to this that one cannot give oneself over to pleasure, calm, without restriction. One's activities must be coordinated taking due account of the importance of virtue, dharma and material goods, earth. Thus the calm tradition not only provides refined ways to experience calm but also checks it so that it doesn't overpower dharma and earth. Watson quotes his predecessors that the man accomplished in earth, calm, dharma, effortlessly attains the maximum of bliss in this world and the next. Thus, for Vatsyayan, calm writing tradition is not only important, but calm is an inseparable aspect of dharma and earth, which helps in attaining bliss in both mundane and transcendental worlds. The second section is the most famous section of the Kama Sutra and has been the prime locus of general curiosity and earlier scholarly concern. So let's interrogate in brief what this section really contains. It contains 10 chapters which includes stimulation of erotic desire, embraces, patting and caresses, the art of scratching, biting, copulation and spatial test, blows and sighs, virile behavior in women, superior cohesion, preludes and conclusion to the game of love. Division of this chapter suggests the fact how Vatsan perceives a sexual act. The arrangement of this chapter is also done in a way as to set the progress of sexual acts. As a normative text, the Kamsutra also mentions about the methods to enhance pleasure along with its limitations. Activities which are not suggested by calm authorities or at least normatively not accepted. For instance, the Kamsutra differentiates among different regional practices and comments how some of them are accepted in Aryavrat or the land of Aryas and some of them are frowned upon. One of the most important yet scarcely asked question is how much active agency the Kamsutra provides a woman. As a normative treatise, the Kamsutra follows the similar line of the Manu Srimriti or any other Shastrik work. The third and fourth section of Kam Sutra, which deals with obtaining a bride and duties of a wife respectively, limits social boundaries for a woman and prefers a virgin girl of same class, Savarn, for marriage. Vatsan also provides women a passive role and sees men as an active agency in a sexual act. However, what is interesting is the fact that Vatsan believes that a woman should read this treatise, the Kam Sutra, before reaching adolescence, and she should continue reading it even after marriage with her husband's consent, and this differentiates the Kam Sutra from other Shastric births. It may seem nothing if we compare it with other modern understanding, but if we contextualize it in ancient India, and compare it with other Shastric works, then this is one of the biggest amendments a Shastra can do because usually they do not consider that a woman should read. Secondly, 
Watson also suggests that a sexual act is like a combat or competition. So no matter how much passive role he gives a woman, her active participation is needed in an act. And unlike her ideal image, the Kam Sutra sometimes portrays a woman as taking the charge or acting as furious as a man. So maybe the public word was not available for her and the text like the Manusimriti tries to suppress her public agency as much as possible but the inner domain must have been different for her and the Kam Sutra gives few indication of it. Now we will leave you here to think more, understand more and finally realize that it is easy to react or create an opinion in seconds but it is really hard to contextualize the past in which these texts and tradition were created. If you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to our channel History Chemistry and share this video with your friends and let's talk some history.